thanks everybody for joining today. We look forward to having a uh, really productive uh, WebEx today. Um, so if we move to the next slide, just a little bit about me. I have about 20 years of experience in the EDI technology consulting background, working primarily with B2B software, enterprise IT, as well as custom software. Um, so my role here at One EDI Source is with uh, product management, our product development groups, as well as working with our marketing team just to educate folks about EDI and, and the products and solutions that we have to offer. Today, we're going to really kind of dive in more to you know, the promise of what EDI can bring, as well as talk through a framework that we've developed here at One EDI Source, uh, working with thousands of customers across the years, uh, and really kind of how we've seen them really take advantage of really the, the full potential that EDI can bring to an organization. And finally, leave everybody uh, on the call with a, you know, some considerations, some takeaway questions. Kind of ask yourself to evaluate kind of, you know, where are you within that framework and you know, how to really kind of take yourself to the next level. So what we see is you know, best in class companies, you know, there's a t tremendous amount of value that they can you know, reap when they really embrace EDI. Uh, some of the stats on the screen are ones that we found that really can provide a dramatic business value when not just doing EDI, but doing EDI well. And it's no surprise that companies you know, within the retail supply chain, like your Walmarts, Targets, or Kohl's, have really embraced EDI as a means of exchanging business documents with their vendors. And at the end of the day, you know, really embracing what it means to them from not just a technology standpoint, but from a business process standpoint, you know, they're really able to you know, optimize their own operations and take themselves to the next level. And really, the core being, you know, enhancing those relationships between the customers and suppliers. So not just to benefit the larger retailers, but as a supplier or vendor to, you know, larger organizations, being able to, you know, leverage the most out of EDI can have a dramatic effect in that working relationship day in and day out. Now, doing EDI is not easy. You know, we are an EDI software and services company, so we work, you know, every day with customers who are working to, you know, introduce EDI into an environment that does not have EDI, or again, you know, trying to scale up their EDI platform uh, with inc for increased demand. And, you know, in those projects, in those, you know, interactions, we, we definitely see, you know, a tremendous amount of complexity. Whether it's complexity that the EDI IT team is having to handle with managing the different standards and, you know, requirements from the different train partners, much less integrate into their back office systems, which the, themselves you know, those requirements can be changed and that business practices, you know, do continue to change throughout an organization. But we also see a significant amount of business complexity around, you know, the actual processes that engage with EDI. You know, regardless if it's the timeliness of, you know, getting documents back to your trading partners or ensuring that, you know, the data is actually accurate within it. And of course, you know, sending bad data isn't just you know, a, a penalty within the, the, the processes, but there's also a significant financial implication of non-compliance, often seen through kind of chargebacks and deductions, which are fairly common within the retail ecosystem. So doing EDI it is not as simple as, you know, uh, an elevated or, you know, the next generation of a fax machine. There's a lot more that goes into it, and the complexity, you know, spans the entire organization as a whole. We also think, don't think that the, the true value and impact of EDI is well understood within the organization. Um, and it's this lack of understanding of the potential impact of EDI, which often leaves it perceived to be, you know, kind of a low value, just a commodity. And really, you know, the, the management of files being moved from one train partner to another train partner. And we see that, you know, the value of EDI is much higher. You know, it's not, necess it's not a commodity that you can get plug and play, but one which is tailored to each and every customer's specific situation, their practices, and do see EDI as you know, being more of a value-added business process and business system within the organization and not just the next generation of fax machines. So really changing the conversation you know, with the stakeholders throughout the organization of you know, the true impact of EDI will enable more folks to understand you know, what it can actually bring to the organization and you know, the, the emphasis that it needs to have throughout the company. And again, you know, every EDI error represents unnecessary costs, and that we see day in and day out as we work with our clients for them to help them become better EDI partners. Now, as we looked into our experiences you know, supporting thousands of companies over the past 25 years, 
we started to see again common patterns, common themes um, across these companies. Some companies might be doing EDI really well, others might be kind of you know, struggling or just getting, you know, just getting into the process and really adopting it as a way of doing business. And so what we've done to help our clients and you know help you know, our team to help and consult with these companies is essentially kind of creating a, an EDI enablement framework to help guide them through their journey. Everyone's journey is different. Um, everyone is at a different spot in that journey. Um, and this just helps to kind of level set you know, how we look at the world and how we believe that the impact of EDI can actually have to the broader organization. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of talk through that framework and, and hopefully through this discussion uh, you'll be able to see that it's very relevant, actionable steps for you to take back to your organizations. So the framework, again, five levels to achieve operational excellence. And what we're going to do is we're going to kind of walk through each of these. Um, but essentially, first you comply, you meet the requirements, then you automate the flow of data, then you optimize that flow of data. Finally, you know, being able to manage um, how you're managing the processes and how you manage within your company um, the different you know exchanges, and then finally the ability to collaborate with your trading partners. Now, oftentimes what we'll find is a company is doing each one of these levels at any given time, uh, maybe at different uh, degrees of success with different trading partners. Um, and what we hope to do you know, through this discussion is really kind of walk through each of these and really find some you know, actual steps to be able to elevate you know, how you're performing at each one of these different levels. And so a couple questions to consider as we're talking through um, the deck. So again, you know, how are you operating at each of the different levels? You know, are, is it different for different trading partners? And do your business stakeholders really understand the impact and opportunity of doing each of these levels well can bring to the organizations? And so we'll go ahead and get started and comply. Now, this level, well, it was all about you know, the initial EDI enablement. So again, you know, the value of EDI, EDI enablement initially is to allow you to serve you know, some of those high volume customers that you uh, that really require EDI as a means of doing business, as a means of exchanging documents. These, um, these, you know, this is often the, the first step that a company takes when they're first introduced to EDI, um, and it's one that you know it's a very you know it's a large you know, chasm to cross, and you know does definitely present some challenges. So, quick point in time, you're really exchanging some of like the more basic EDI documents, oftentimes you can't purchase, and you have you see trade partners load document volumes, and typically as you might have within your organization that you know, cannot necessarily handle in Integration um, that allows you to you know, work with EDI, respond to EDI through a web-based interface. Oftentimes, with more of, kind of an email type you know, model to it. Um, but this is kind of you know, the, the requirement to become EDI enabled and the first step in the process. But what you see is you know, as you engage in this process, you know, you're only realizing again the, the fraction of the value that EDI can provide. You know, sure, you, you're compliant with your training partner's requirements, but your processes all remain manual. You're, you're creating every ship notice. You're creating every invoice. Um, and that process you know, works well um, and scales to a certain degree. Um, but for the most part, your customers are the ones who are reaping from all the benefits of the kind of that full EDI enablement. They're the ones who you know, are, are you know, leveraging the, the benefits of automation. Um, but again, you know, this does get you across the first initial hurdle. Um, but doesn't quite take you all the way. We'll, we'll talk more about kind of how we can take you there. So as we look at level two, you know, when you go from just complying to, to automating, you know, there's a couple of reasons to kind of consider making that move. Um, and maybe you might have some of your training partners who you're using web portals or web forms with, while others might be automated and can evaluate as it makes sense to automate them. Um, but as you, you know, as your documents increase, 
you know, as you within your organization become more overwhelmed by the, the manual processes associated with turning each of those documents around, or just the juggling of the variety of different customer portals, you know, the, you know, there's a number of reasons to start kind of looking at automation as, as a solution to the challenges that you face, and really can start recognizing the value for yourself rather than doing the work so that your training partners are you know, reaping all those benefits, which will take to more of the automation. Now, the value of automating, you know, that we have uh, four different kind of value propositions to automate your B2B exchanges on this slide, from decreasing costs to enhancing your customer satisfaction. And again, you know, the, the streamlining those processes and creating the efficiencies and the scale to handle more training partners, more documents, potentially even more complex documents, you know, represents a, a significant um, value added result and outcome from really adopting a more automated B2B exchange. And yeah, as we talked about earlier, you know, once you get around you know, over 100 documents that traded uh, per month, um, more than five trade partners, that's typically where you'll start realizing the need to you know, automate to more degree. And finally, to the right, just an automated checklist. So these are the types of things that you're wanting to kind of check the box to make sure you have all these capabilities when you look to you know, evaluate you know, moving from a more web-based model to a more you know, integrated, integrated option. Also, not just you know, an integrated process, but you know, EDI is, is more than just the exchange of documents. It's more than just a, a managed file transfer. Uh, the EDI you know, process and, and standard itself you know, has a number of, kind of built-in oftentimes kind of built in um, checks along the way. So, you know, EDI is a, is a standard, so the documents being passed back and forth must comply to the actual standards. So any kind of standards validation should be an expectation of an automated solution, as well as the functional acknowledgement reconciliation. So just like a certified mail, when you, when you send a letter, you get a receipt back. EDI operates that same way. Uh, whereby, you know, as you send, you know, a, for instance, an invoice, you should be receiving that functional acknowledgement back from your training partner. And the reconciliation of those documents and their associated receipts to ensure that from a technical standpoint, from an automation standpoint, what you sent was actually received. It should be a, you know, a, a baseline, you know, table stakes type requirement from, from any kind of EDI automated kind of exchange that you might pursue. And finally, the you know, duplicate documents. So you, you might you know, assume that once you go EDI, everything is great, and you know, nobody ever makes a mistake. Um, but oftentimes, we see that you know, even the, the, the best companies doing EDI you know, might send something more than once, might key something more than once in ERP and have it sent out. Um, so making sure that you're, you're kind of protected from those duplicate documents. Again, you know, these are kind of the, the baseline requirements of the, of the kind of EDI compliance process that, that you, know, you should expect when embarking on automation. So once you kind of automate it, so the documents are kind of flowing back and forth, it's, it's kind of, at this point in time, you start kind of wondering, okay, is it time for me to kind of start evaluating whether or not I should go to the next level? Um, and this, you know, this slide here, kind of talking through you know, some of the different uh, reasons to start considering a level three or more of an optimized, you know, automated solution. Um, again, failing to realize the process and efficiencies as EDI documents continue to need manual review. You know, do you have purchase orders that need to be looked at before they get inserted back into your back end ERP system? You know, be that because there might be pricing issues or different ship to locations that are not necessarily you know, resident within your ERP package. And you know, do you really find you know, you're after the fact digging through many errors? And kind of managing, you know, a lot of you know, exception cases and almost too many to handle. And, you know, even though you've automated, it's still having challenges with uh, the data quality. Uh, so really, you know, looking at level three as you know a, a way to try to you know, provide those errors. And so if you're experiencing a lot of these challenges with the data flowing back and forth through an automated solution, you know, that's when you'd want to evaluate going to level three to optimize your B2B exchange. Now, you know, we also find that you know there's many elusive benefits to automation. So, you know, once you you know, started down the automation path, you've eliminated those errors due to manual entry. But again, you still those errors still persist. So, you know, they're still impacting business performance. You're still having customers 
relationship challenges because of issues in the data that's being passed and forth, back and forth. And so we really see the solution is to leverage more again, custom business rule alerts to, to manage those by exception, to allow your systems and technologies to work on your behalf, you know, almost you know, a, a firewall to a certain degree, you know, to make sure that the data within those documents is accurate and correct before you commit to those orders or you send the, the data back out to your particular training partners. And the value, when optimized, is really to remove a lot of that customer friction uh, that does occur when issues happen in the DEV exchange back and forth, but they just snowball into larger issues. And sometimes those issues can be quite costly, um, explicitly through chargebacks or deductions, or maybe they're just inconveniences of being paid late. So for instance, if there's an issue in sending out a particular invoice, you know, you might not understand or know about that particular issue for 30, 60, 90 days until that you know, payment due is not paid, and then you have to go research the issue, identify that it's late, reissue the invoice, and then re basically reset the clock in our 30, 60, 90 days, again, delaying cash flow. So you're know, having you know, smoother transactions, shortening that ca order to cash cycle, and really allowing you to scale without having to go through and you know, evaluate and research each and every you know, issue. You're now proactively identifying those issues and taking action accordingly. So a significant amount of value of not just doing EDI, but doing EDI well, you know, when you're able to you know, fully optimize that business business exchange. So come up with five different kind of checks, um, and so this kind of open, you know, a more actionable kind of, you know prescription of you know, things that you can take back to your organizations uh, to help optimize your BB exchange and ask you, know, are you doing these types of things today? So the first one is, you know, are the documents sound? Are they internally sound and consistent within themselves? So a number of you know, examples is whether or not the, the ASM line items total up to the, the total number of items shipped. Um, you know, do, does the value of all your line items on your invoices actually match the value at, at the very end? You know, we often see uh, situations where you know, a business process change might occur where you weren't charging for freight um, initially and then you began charging for freight um, and the, the, the EDI data maps weren't updated, and so you might be charging for freight in your ERP package, but when you actually go to send that particular invoice, that's not on your invoice. I mean, that's a fairly common issue that we do find you know, across our companies is we really can't get into some of this. Um, and that's an easy one to find, being that the, the invoice total at the bottom of your invoice is not necessarily consistent with the, you know, all the line items summed up. And again, all the, the discounts, allowances, you know, these can get fairly complex, whether it's at the header level or the line item level, you know, are these discounts in dollar amounts, discounts in percentages, and just making sure that, you know, the, the math essentially adds up within the, the particular documents. The second one is to see if those documents are accurate. Do they align, you know, does the train partner data that, you know, is coming in align to your internal system data? Uh, so, for instance, if are you the ship dates on a particular order? You know, maybe it's a ship no later than ship not before then. You know, arrive by date. Are the uh, the dates correctly to the dates of your back office system, um, such that your fulfillment team has an accurate understanding of what the expectation is, so they're not shipping on a arrive by date when they believe it's a ship you know ship by date. Um, are, is there other kind of you know, new items, new locations that isn't necessarily set up within your back office um, systems, but you're receiving them from your uh, your train partners? And of course, you know the, the pricing violations discussion. I mean, if the customer sends in an item price that is not the item price that's in your system, you know, how are you handling that? You know, do you kick that back out to the customer to reissue the purchase order, or? Are you accepting their price and dealing with it on the back end, or are you overriding that price and using your internal price? And then, of course, at that point in time, your invoice isn't going to match your purchase order pricing, and then that's another conversation and you know, additional friction between you and your trading partner. So you know, understand you know, does the information that your partners are sending you align to the data that you have within your system. It's definitely one way to kind of optimize that B2B exchange. The second are, is the information complete? You know, is there you know, key required information that your trading partners are expecting? You know, be it you know, carrier information, customer, you know, they want their customer parts instead of your internal parts, and you know, are, is the EDI data that you're sending out you know, complete 
uh, against the requirements that they have. So being able to kind of check that, it definitely avoids a whole bunch of discussions that different teams within your organization would need to have with those trading partners you know, if the data and information were not complete. Next being timely. So in this case, you know, are the documents timely based on you know, the trading partners' requirements? Uh, we see this with you know, very, very time sensitive purchase order acknowledgments. Um, if you don't you know, turn that acknowledgement around within 24 hours, they might go somewhere else and ask you know, to buy that product from, from another vendor. You know, processing the purchase order changes. You know, we've seen customers you know, who might send out upwards of six, on average, six uh, PO changes per order. You know, do you have the ability to kind of handle you know, all that the changing view of what they've actually ordered uh, and allow that to ripple throughout your organization. Um, finally, you know, RA is sent on time and you know, our invoice is sent promptly you know, after that AF send is sent. The next step is being, you know, are you consistent? So is it, you know, where the first rule was kind of, you know, was it sound? The second, uh, the, sorry, the fifth check is now, you know, is it consistent between the documents? You know, so is the item pricing on the PO match what's on the invoice? You know, the item information, you know, kind of aligning between the purchase order, ship notice, and invoice, and really making sure that, you know, the data is consistent across the EDI documents to make sure that there's no uh, confusion or misinterpretation of what that order looks like with the particular trading partner. And so those are, you know, five, you know, kind of checks that we see and we work with clients to implement to really kind of optimize uh, their particular B2B exchange relationships and really you know, take a lot of the friction out of the, the train partner relationship. So at this point in time, you, you have an automated exchange. You have it you know, uh, being validated against a number of different business rules. Um, and then you know, what's the, the reason to kind of go to that next step or you know, elevate your managed capability within your organization? Um, and where we see this playing most out is the, the lack of visibility that many of the functional teams have uh, as it relates to you know, accessing the information that they need to be able to be that advocate for the customer. Um, if you're in an organization that you know, oftentimes experiences a, a numerous kind of research requests from you know, customer service or accounting departments, you know, this is indicative of them not having access to the data they need. Uh, and then, of course, once you provide that data to them, you know, being able to, for them to understand that data requires them to be able to read EDI syntax. Uh, I mean, EDI is terrific enough as it is. Uh, it was a standard built for computers to speak with other computers. Um, and to be able to you know, require a new accounts receivable clerk or customer service representative to not only learn the processes and job responsibilities within their department, but also be able to actually read EDI syntax on top of those job responsibilities can be quite onerous for organizations. Uh, and so being able to kind of provide you know, the right information to the right people in a way they can understand you know, really helps elevate their ability to manage those business relationships and take you to the, the fourth level that we look at as being you know, that, that manage capability. So again, you know, once you've automated EDI, you, know, you, you put in the business rules, you know, the data is flowing back and forth from your train partners to yourself, but even while it is, you know, EDI is really kind of like, you know, it conceals, it's like that black box. It conceals the documents from those who need it most. And then it's that challenge that we believe, you know, the visibility, you know, can, can really help. And with that visibility, it allows you to better manage your B2B exchange. So again, to avoid new issues when practice, business practices change. Um, and again, you know, getting ahead of errors. Uh, whether it's you know a late or missing you know uh, advance ship notice, or maybe you ship the goods but you haven't invoiced them yet, and you know, we talked to one client who was trying to collect on an invoice, and they they, couldn't, they were trying to figure out you know why was why was it not being paid, and they found out that it got stuck in their EDI system, and you know nine days later they're trying to figure out where this ninety thousand dollars is, and you know we could tell them exactly where it was. Um, so making sure that you're not you know, missing documents or you're not, you know, from a timeliness standpoint, you're not sending documents late, that can, of course, have an impact on, again, the, the chargebacks and deductions. And really understand the, the trends. You know, are you getting better? Are you getting worse? And implementing the processes to you know, improve performance over time allows you to take more control over that B2B relationship. And the value of managing that B2B relationship, um, again, it, it provides you that, that visibility 
that's critical. Gives you the critical insights, you know, into you know, oftentimes your most important business relationships. Because at the end of the day, you know, those clients that you're exchanging EDI data with are typically your larger, you know, more uh, strategic accounts. Um, and you know, having that management capability really you know, evolve allows you to more proactively address those issues and really act on the actual intelligence that you get from that information. So to manage, though, does require that visibility as mentioned. So it's the right information to the right person, and of course, in a way they can understand. So again, one kind of talk through you know, five steps that we've seen um, where companies can really be able to take you know their EDI processes to the next level um, and be able to kind of get the most out of that EDI investment. So the first one being order changes. So again, knowing you know when duplicate purchase orders. You know, a couple examples being you know, duplicate purchase orders and purchase order change requests. So understand when the PO. Uh, you know, came in, a second PO came in, you know, how you handle that, do the right people know about it, is this a, an issue that the train partner accidentally sent you a duplicate purchase order, or is this in fact a purchase order change as in the form of the purchase order? And so the, the process side to this, um, it can be quite significant working with the customer service folks and making sure that they have the right information. And of course, understanding, you know, from a technology automation standpoint, you know, what do you do in that situation? Do you overwrite purchase order in your ERP system, if you've already begun trying to fulfill that, what does that mean for your fulfillment team? Um, and so not just the technology, but the processes around duplicate purchase orders. Purchase order change requests is, is another one. You know, we've talked to a number of clients who, you know, their systems actually don't handle these 860 type documents. Being able to work with them to be able to provide their customer service teams, you know, that level of visibility to be able to better manage those order changes you know, can be quite significant. Next, from a visibility standpoint, is the, the source data. So this is, you know, the exact data received uh, from your trading partners. Sometimes we'll see customers, you know, put a uh, number of notes in a purchase order um, that has no nowhere to go in a, in a back office ERP package. Um, so while customer service teams need to review basically each and every purchase order as they come in for the specific instructions on each of those purchase orders. Finally, if you need to look up the, the ship date expectations, again, you know, a dozen different ways to represent a date in a purchase order, uh, but being able to know you know, what exactly your customers are telling you is important, especially if you don't have the ability to load those date fields in your back office ERP package. Uh, so really kind of having, you know, the, the visibility of the, the data that was actually sent to you um, by your customers, you know, is oftentimes critical to kind of understand what, what are truly the expectations that they have. Next being, you know, a number of non-integrated documents uh, that do come across, you know, the EDI channel that really have nowhere to go. You know, things like text messages, things like application and advice methods. So sometimes these are kind of more routine kind of technical documents. Sometimes you know these are actual messages to somebody within you know accounting or customer service, and making sure that these teams are aware that these you know these EDI documents exist, and that you know somebody's looking at them. You know we're always you know fearful when we walk into a client's organization, and they they haven't looked at their text messages in years, or sometimes their EDI department you know isn't reviewing them or just kind of put them somewhere else. So really, you know, knowing that these documents exist and making sure that the right people in the organization are, are seeing them, you know, can make a world of difference. Next would be, kind of re, you know, the related documents uh, to a particular kind of business transaction. So that's, you know, kind of creating that, that full picture of the, the business transaction from the purchase order to the ship notes to the invoice, to any associated documents that might be, you know, included within that, you know, single kind of business conversation, if you will. And you know, understanding those related documents helps really can provide you know the, the, the full view to somebody who's trying to kind of hunt down a particular situation or a particular issue. Um, instead, we often find you know different research requests you know sent from accounting or customer service to the EDI teams to kind of dig up an, an invoice and then hey, can you go grab me all the uh, ship notices and maybe the purchase order or there any purchase order changes associated with that invoice, just so they can really understand what's going on. And so, you know, provide to them you know, all the docs that relate to one another, give them the full tapestry, if you will, uh, of that business transaction can be incredibly powerful. And then finally, you know, be able to provide them in a way that they can understand it. 
And again, you know, EDI data, EDI syntax is great from a data exchange standpoint. I mean, this was a standard, you know, established back in the 70s when the exchange of data was very expensive over the internet. Now, at this point in time, it's much cheaper, uh, but we still can maintain that very kind of cryptic technical standard. Uh, and so being able to provide them the actual EDI data rendered in a way that they can actually understand that, you know, it looks like an invoice, it looks like a ship notice, it looks like a bill of lading, um, really can allow them to be much more productive and again get their teams up to speed much faster. So each of these, you know, different ways to, or you know, your five different ways can provide, you know, more visibility to really empower, you know, functional teams within your organization to be able to, you know, better engage in that EDI process and um, leverage it to a much greater extent. Um, and at, at this point in time, you know, now that we, we're, we're automating, we've established the business rules, we provide the visibility internally to the, right, the teams uh, who need the information most, um, but we're still kind of talking internally within the company. And so, you know, if we find any of these, um, like on this slide, you know, whether it's the you know, customers just continue to persist or chargebacks, you know, still have a kind of cost of doing business type, you know, uh, perception within the organization. Uh, it might, uh, you know, allow us to kind of really invest more time in that level five, um, state, you know, level to kind of you know, provide more collaboration, not just within the organization, but across, um, you know, our trading partner and our supply chain network. So the last level, is collaboration and to be able to collaborate better. And you know, so what we've done again is we've kind of connected the internal dots between sales and customer service fulfillment accounting who you need to work in concert with one another uh, to be able to ensure that you know, the, the expectations established by your customers are fulfilled all the way through the process. But this only will get you so far. We really need you know, that the external collaboration. Uh, kind of changing the conversation so it's no longer just you know, this EDI document, this or this data piece, did that, and now it's more, you know, did we fulfill the orders on time? Did we ship you the right goods? And empowering your internal stakeholders with the information they need to be most successful in those conversations with your suppliers, with the third-party warehouse, you know, through PL providers, in support of providing your customers, you know, at the end of the day, you know, what they need to be successful. So we see that internal empowerment, you know, really helps change the conversation uh, with, you know, those who are outside the boundaries of your organization to you know, improve those business relationships and really can maximize the value potential that, you know, an automated B2B exchange can provide. And so, again, engaging with our trained partners, you know, allows us to get on the same page, see the, see the same information, and really build those relationships so that we can improve, you know, the issue resolution solution and enhance the overall supply chain and of course the ultimate goal being you know, making sure that we get the right goods to the right people at the right time at the lowest cost. So finally, uh, some considerations for everybody to kind of take away with today. Um, kind of a self-assessment against the EDI framework. Um, so I won't read through all these and we'll definitely be sending this out later. Uh, but being able to you know, assess how are you doing you know, in your comply, automate, optimize, manage and collaborate levels um, and looking for opportunities to kind of raise your game you know, at each one of these levels to ensure that the, the potential value and the potential business impact that EDI can have on your organization is maximized with the investment that you put into it. And so finally, I want to thank everybody uh, for joining us on the webinar this afternoon and hope you all have a great day. Thank you, Mike. Michael, this concludes the webinar today. Have a good one.